All right, real quick before we get going. Oh, man. It is unavoidable to say. All right, real quick before we get going, <laughs> I do want to say that I'm a little bit sick, so if my voice sounds a little bit weird or anything, that's why. Also, this video is sponsored by The Bluegrass Marketer. I don't know if you already followed this account, but it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook. It's run by a guy named Adam. Adam is a super cool dude. He's a new friend of mine. We got a good chance to hang out a couple weekends ago. He is a marketing expert and he specializes in bluegrass. So please check him out on Instagram. Please check him out on Facebook and he can hook you up with a free 30-minute consultation to help you promote any product products or services you may be working on. So yes, thank you Bluegrass Marketer for sponsoring this video. All right, folks. So this week we're going to be working on how to play Tony Rice's Never Meant to Be. It seems like everyone is really enjoying these how to play Tony Rice's whatever videos. If you'd like to see this for another Tony Rice song or maybe another artist, please leave a comment down below. So if this is the first one that you're seeing, you should check out my how to play Port Tobacco and how to play Manzanita along with my four things to steal from Manzanita video. Hell, you can even check out four things you should steal from Church Street Blues. There's so many Tony Rice videos on this YouTube channel. I could possibly list all of them right here. So please dig around for that a little bit. Anyway, let's get into some background info for Never Meant to Be. Never Meant to Be appears on Tony's 2008 album, Night Flyer, the singer-songwriter collection. This album meant a lot to Tony's fans because Tony's voice had already gone after years of touring and hard use. This album gave a lot of us our last chance to hear Tony sing. His performance of the Tom Waits song, Pony, is particularly gut-wrenching. Now that IBMA has come and gone this year, it feels appropriate to mention Tony's acceptance speech for his Lifetime Achievement Award at IBMA 2013. If you haven't heard or seen it yet, Tony gave his hope of singing in the future, but that has yet to happen. This is not easy. It takes some brain power to get into this, so bear with me a second. That now I am speaking in my real voice. Mm. 27 years before that speech, Tony had written and considered releasing the original composition Never Meant to Be on his Me and My Guitar album, which I covered the history of in my Port Tobacco video. But this song sat until 2008, when it became one of three previously unreleased recordings on Nightflyer. Those three being Pony by Tom Waits, About Love by Larry Rice, and Never Meant to Be by Tony. Information on the song is scarce, but it is undeniably Gordon Lightfoot inspired. In 2008, Bluegrass Today described it on their website as a venting of his feelings in the aftermath of the breakup of a long-term marriage with a sad, bitter tone that is completely real in its sense of unresolved hurt and anger. This assessment is brutally honest. If you want to know more about Tony and the time of his life this song came out of, please consider purchasing a copy of his biography, Still Inside. It's an incredible read, and if you're lucky like me, you might be able to snatch up an autographed copy. As always, that's enough history. Let's get into the guitar playing. Before we go any further, let me play you that intro break so you can get a better idea of what you're trying to replicate. It should feel really similar to a lot of the stuff that's on the Church Street Blues album. Of course, the recording of Never Meant to Be has a full band on it, but it's got a lot of that uh, cross-picking and those brief strums and the string crossings and all of those kind of things. So listen for all of that, and then let's talk about it. <laughs> So before we get into all that kind of pick stroke nonsense that's obviously happening in this tune, let's talk about uh, the chords he picks and his, his note choice, because that kind of informs what we need to know on the guitar when we learn this tune. So we're in the key of E, but we're capable on the fourth fret and we're using C shapes. So I'm going to speak like we're in the key of C because, of course, I'm speaking relative to capo just like we normally do. As far as chords go, the progression is slightly different for the verse and chorus, but we can talk about that later. The breaks happen over the chorus chords and they're super straight. We got one, we got four, we got five. Five, we got six, and then we have that ever emotional three chord. Right, so really no surprising chords. So let's talk about note choice. Well, you should buckle the. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should buckle the hell up because we're in for a dynamic thrill ride of mostly just the C major scale. Actually, except for the second note of the kick, there is a lonely little F sharp relative to capo, of course. So here's the C major scale position that you need to know, and you hopefully already know. Now 
now that I've lulled you into a false sense of security, let's talk about pick strokes. So I'm sure we all know, or we've all heard, that if you want a flat pick, you should be using alternate picking. That is to say, down, up, down, up, down, up, back and forth. There's a couple different ways that Tony likes to abandon down, up pick strokes, especially when he's playing arpeggios. He'll have three notes on the three adjacent strings, and he won't play down, up, down. He'll play something else, and we're going to talk about that. Now, just so you know, I can't find a good video of Tony's picking hand while he's playing this song. So these are my best guesses for the tune, and I'm using what I know about other tunes that Tony plays, like Church Street Blues, to inform my decisions. In any case, whether this is exactly how he plays this break or not, this is just good stuff to know in general when you're taking on Tony's breaks, because you'll find this all over the place. Oh no, help me, I'm shrinking! All right, so the first way Tony likes to crosspick in this tune isn't really breaking any rules, and I'll show you what I mean. He'll take a passage like these first four notes over the C chord, and he plays them with a down, down, up pick pattern. But because the first two notes are connected by a hammer-on, everything is still kind of right in the world. He took what would have been a downstroke and then an upstroke, and he made it a downstroke with a hammer-on instead. So it's like he's ignoring that upstroke. He plays the entire first line using this over and over again, so there's not a whole lot of messing with you here. He's playing it pretty straight. The downs go where you expect them, the ups go where you expect them. In the second line, Tony does do some actual weirdness, though. In the first measure, we get four downstrokes, which is what we would expect, right? He's hitting all those downstrokes on the downbeats. But in the second measure, the first four notes are actually up, down, down, up. So why would he play those first four eighth notes like that? In this case, it has to do with the three ascending notes on the three adjacent strings, just like I said earlier in this video, and just like I said in my port tobacco video. Tony's gonna wanna play those three notes with a down, down, up pick pattern. And since there's one note before that happens, he doesn't want that to be a down as well. He doesn't want three downs in a row and then an up. He wants up, down, down, up. So that's a little bit of what some people would call economy picking, but uh, in bluegrass, we call that more of a cross picking pattern. In any case, Tony's using it not in a repetitive way. He's using it just in this one isolated moment, which he does a lot in tunes like Church Street Blues or Orphan Annie or I don't know anything that kind of sounds like that, Streets of London, whatever. The rest of this line, he's using the expected pick strokes once again, a downstroke on every downbeat and an upstroke on the and of every beat, except for the last three notes, which become a down, down, up again, because they're all ascending adjacent strings. You can see that on your E, A, and your D string. Uh, this third line has all the standard pick strokes, nothing funky going on here. Um, however, the fourth line, so the next line after that, the last line of the break has some fun in it again. The second measure here, once again, it starts with up, down, down, up, because it's the same is the earlier measure. It's using that same kind of line right there. In the third measure, it looks like we might have a down, down, up situation on our hands, but I actually think Tony plays this measure down, up, down, up with normal alternate picking. I don't know why, just a hunch. You can play it either way. In the fourth measure, we have a string crossing, and I think Tony plays these four notes with down, down, up, down, starting beat one of the next measure with an upstroke. Very strange, I know, but uh, for any of you that have tried to learn Church Street Blues, you know that sometimes Tony does these things to us. If you can make peace with all of those funky moments, you're well on your way to learning this song. You should make sure you have all those pick strokes going the right direction, and then you can check out this full version of me playing the break with the tab. You can see what that looks like, what that sounds like. You can follow along, and you can hit the settings wheel. It should be like right there-ish. And you can change the speed of the video. You can slow me down to like 50%. You can play along with me and you can see that very easily. I'll also have the tab available on my website in the tab store. It'll be listed for $0. You just go through the payment process, you're done. But yeah, so here's the version of me playing it with the tab the entire break. <laughs> So there's definitely some chord change shenanigans going on between the verse and the chorus. This is what I think is going on in those two different sections. Also, funny, while I was doing research for this video, I saw in the comment section of another video, someone was like, ah, it seems like Tony's doing something weird in the verse. So if that was you, this is what's going on. So when you take a break to this tune, you're actually taking a break over the chorus form. So let's talk about that first, since that's the chord change that you're going to see the most. This is the chord change that you'll see in the sheet music that I give you. This is the chord change for the chorus and the breaks. <laughs> so 
So like I said earlier, this chord change is pretty straightforward, but what happens when he changes from the chorus to the verse is he takes lines one and three, and he switches the last two bars of both of those lines. So I'll show you what that sounds like. This is the verse chord progression now. Also, every time that uh, Tony gets to the second line and he's got that longer stretch of a G chord, he likes to do a little bit of cross picking there. And I think he likes to do a little variation of what happens in the break in that moment. Um, it creates kind of this suspended effect over the G chord. And I was just doing it a little bit just with strumming. But uh, just so you know, it's there. You can listen to it in the recording. You can try to come up with a good approximation of that. It changes every time, so I didn't think it was worth writing out. But there you go. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the ending. So Tony gives us that four chord ending at the end of Never Meant to Be. Uh, basically, the last time you go around, you really expect that C chord, but that's not what you get. You get this nice long F chord, and you could put kind of any number of variations on it. A lot of you probably play your F chord maybe like this, maybe like this, maybe like this, maybe like this. However you play your F chord, here are some variations you can do on top of it. I'm a really big fan of including that open G string in your F chord, so. Sounds really nice. You can also include your open E string which is something that Tony's actually done earlier in the break. All right, so that's an, a possible substitution for that F chord if you want to do something fancy. The other variation that you can do is you can include a G note on your low E string right here. I'm gonna mute my A string, I'm gonna leave strings D and G open, and then on my B string and my high E string, I'm gonna bar first fret. That's a very Tony Rice chord. He'll use that for a G7. He'll use it for an F chord sometimes. So there you go. There's a bunch of options. You got all your normal F chords that you might play. You can include your open G string. You can include your open E string. Or both, which would be, what is that, a 9, and that's a major 7. So major 7 add 9. Or it could be a sus chord if you wanted to call it that way too. This one would probably be like F6-9 with G in the bass. Lots of cool names for those chords. They don't really matter though, but that's what Tony would do for the F chord. Then he plays this short rhythm riff. It's kind of hard to transcribe this rhythm stuff, you know, and get it perfect because he could have done this in a number of places, but this is definitely close enough to make most folks happy. All right, so that should do it. From beginning to end, we covered was chords, scales, pick strokes, uh, Tony's break, and how he tags it. So if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Go in the barnyard, there's always a couple things you can do for me. You can go down there. You can hit that subscribe button. You can like this video. You can leave a comment. I would love all those things. Of course, you can check me out around the web. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, you can find that special Instagram account, Jazz and Grass. This month, I've been posting only Tony Rice licks, snippets from actual breaks, and I say what song it is. Of course, you can also check out my website, lessonswithmarcel.com. I got merch. My merch is still out. Look at that. Uh, you can find me there for Skype lessons too if you want to hop on the schedule. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time.